So to kick things off, I am going to be upgrading my current system, Asus Republic of Gamers laptop, with a external graphics setup via Thunderbolt 3 to a RTX 2080 8 gig model from EVGA. The audio in this clip was actually so terrible that I had to go back over it. I have an Asus ROG 752VL. It has the 6700HQ Intel i7 processor, 12 gigs of RAM, and the internal graphics is the GTX 965M with 2 gigs of video RAM. It's a decent little thing from 2015, but uh, it does not hold up well today. With the external graphics right now, I'm running the GTX 1060 3 gig model from EVGA. That's a little box right behind the laptop. That's driving the external monitor. I would never drive the internal monitor with the external graphics. We have way too much of a bottleneck as is. And you'll see that later whenever we get the RTX hooked up. So this is all done through Thunderbolt 3 and uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys what's inside of this uh, Sonic Breakaway box. So I had previously gone from a GTX 1050 Ti 4 gig model to this 1060 SC. Like I said, this is a 3 gig model and I have noticed an incredible amount of boost and performance gains from this graphics card. Alright everyone, so here you can see the results that I have come up with on 3D Mark. So it got an overall score of 7168. And if we go down here to our detailed scores, we can see all our frame rates hitting an average of about, well, I don't know, 35 frames, if not lower. Um, now this is all uh, on the GTX 965. Um, and if you scroll down here, we can see all of the uh, other specs of the PC. So if you want to take a closer look at that, you can go ahead and pause it. But here we can go over to the 1060 3 gig, got an overall score of 10605. And if we come down here, we can see da, 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 just a little bit more of the um, specs of the PC. Again, if you want to take a closer look at that, uh, you can go ahead, pause the video and uh, take a closer look. So we're going to go over to the detailed scores so we can look at the frame rates. And here we have the graphics reliant tests have pretty much doubled. We're hitting a good 60, 70 frames a second on most of the tests. All right, everybody. So UPS just came and uh, First things first, I just gotta say that this box is a mammoth. I mean, this is the box to my 1060 for comparison. It's ridiculous and ridiculously heavy. So they uh, packed a whole lot of ray tracing into this thing, evidently. So, and this is my Galaxy S9 Plus for more comparison. So that is a ridiculously large box. So let's get her opened up. Apologize for everybody cringing using my keys to open this thing. Maybe I can get the tape off. Right, and the moment of truth. Oh, wow. That is insane. I opened that wrong, but that's insane. 
set that aside. And let's get into the content of this thing. So, first of all, let me move right here. All right, I'm sorry for the crinkling. Some of you might like it, but this is not an ASMR channel. Pull some packaging out. Main event. Holy God, this thing is <laughs> massive. Wow. Okay, Let's set this aside for now. Let's see what else, what other goodies we got. EVGA. Turn this around for you guys. Got a new EVGA sticker for my eGPU. That'll come in handy. Installation guide. Straightforward. I'm not doing SLI. Okay. And what is this? DVI to H. DMI cable, that's odd. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah, just a standard DVI to HDMI. That's uh, that one, That's an odd one. All right, I haven't seen that before, but then again, all I bought is used stuff, so let's crack this big boy open. I don't need that. about all I can say. Wow, that is huge. That is three slots. That is crazy. Sorry about road noise. That is insane. All right, so we've got our display port. HDMI, display port, display port, and looks to be USB C. I don't know, maybe for VR or something. I'm not sure. So we'll set that down. Don't worry, this is marble, not metal. All right. Well, here comes the best part the peelies. I will set you guys right here so you can get a good. Uh, Listen to that. That was some of the most satisfying peelies ever. Just saying. So, my god, I can't get over how big this thing is. I mean, it is three slots long. Three PCI slots long. Alright, well, um, is there anything else? Doesn't look like it. All right, I will uh, get this thing installed. I'll, I'll walk you guys through how installation goes. I'm a little bit worried about the three PCI slots. I think I only have room for two PCI slots on my eGPU, but uh, 
we might have to modify that in some way because I am not cutting into this beautiful thing. All right, let's uh, see how this goes. Alright, so never will I ever do that kind of massacring or Frankensteining to anything ever again. I had to completely massacre the back of my eGPU, but nonetheless, it does run well, three PCIe slots now. So we're going to hook this up, give it a try, and uh, see what kind of numbers we can get out of this, if any. So here we are with the results of the RTX 2080. Uh, again, we are looking at an incredible increase on our scoring at 15,432. At our overall score, um, we're 90% better than all the results. Let's see. Again, we can take a closer look at the specs of the card and the overall specs of the PC. Again, pause it if you want to look closer into that. So here we have an incredible uh, boost in our frames per second. And uh, here are the complete details, but it's just the preset. Um, but yeah, we're, we're passing the 100 maybe even 120 FPS mark. All right, so here we are with Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition. Uh, we're gonna go look at the graphics and we have it set to a 60 FPS, 100% resolution with everything really turned all the way up. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual gameplay itself. Um, I know it's very hard to see, but in the top left-hand corner, I have the Steam FPS counter on. This is a really good representation of the bottlenecks that occur when using an external graphics card setup. The performance of this game is 100% playable. We're looking at 30 to 60 FPS. For instance, when taking a look at Battlefront 2 2018 edition, or I'm sorry, 2017, we have everything turned all the way up to Ultra with uh, DirectX 12 on. So we're going to go ahead and go to Assault. We found a game on Tatooine. Halloween event so the maps are going to be a little bit different i can't say i've played on this map at night so 
don't expect uh, the greatest gameplay here. So with the, with the first spawn in, you do notice that everything is, seems pretty playable. Everything's a solid oh, 50, 60 frames per second, which is still pretty similar to what we saw in Final Fantasy 15. So when we get to the outdoor scenes, we are still noticing pretty solid 60, 50 FPS. Now, I do have V-Sync on. All the effects look great. No slowdowns in firefights at all. Explosions, particles, everything looks fantastic. Now, I was actually a little bit thrown off by the results I got from Grand Theft Auto 5. So, as you can see, I have all of the graphics settings turned all the way up. And when we go over to advanced graphics, we also see that we are looking at 1.75 times scale resolution. While it could be the high resolutions, I believe this was my worst performing game. It would dip down into the 20s, which was really surprising considering this game is three years old and this is a brand new graphics card. So again, we are really showing off the bottlenecks that come with using an external graphics card setup, but I can't stress enough that all of these games are 100% playable unless you're really looking for unlocked FPS at 120 frames a second consistently. If you have a 60 hertz monitor, you're not going to notice hardly any major FPS loss in day-to-day -day gameplay. We can really see how much of a performance gain the RTX 2080 has given us even in an external graphics setup. I'm really happy with how this has all turned out and I can't thank you enough for sticking with me in my first video on GOT Games. So thank you so much for watching, subscribe to GOT Games, like the video if you liked it, dislike if not, and I'll see you next time.